Welcome to a new episode of A Guide to Lotro. In today's episode, Erif Luin. The place of many kingdoms. The kingdoms of dwarfs. This is also the home to a bunch of elves that you can find in the realm called Falathlorn. Of course, we can also find evil goblins here. But most important, this is the home to a lynx mother that is just trying to find her kid. The Erefluin is a mountain chain that can be found in the western part of Middle-earth or Eriador. In the tongue of men, Erefluin is also called the Blue Mountains. Its history and lore reaches all the way back to the first age of the world. In the first age, the continent of Middle-earth was still geographically connected to the continent of Beleriand. Beleriand is the place where most of the drama and history of elves and the Dark Lord Morgoth play out. During these times, the Erefluin was the geographical border between Beleriand and Middle-earth. This mountain chain became the home of two of the seven dwarven fathers during the First Age. They both decided to found a new kingdom each. This was the birth of two great dwarven cities, which are called Belegost and Nogrond. Those dwarves would soon find elves, which lived to the west in Beleriand. This land was called Osiriant, the land of seven rivers, which emerged from the Erethluin westwards into Beleriand. The dwarves and elves would trade a lot and aid in warp times for many centuries. The dwarves also decided to build mighty roads through the Erethluin to connect Middle-earth and Beleriand. Belegost and Nogrond became strongholds of the east in Beleriand that not even the terrible dragon Glaurung of Morgoth could conquer. At the end of the First Age, during the War of Wrath, entire Beleriand was destroyed and sunk into the ocean. During this cataclysmic event, some of the Erefluin would be flooded during a major tidal wave event. Those tidal waves flooded and destroyed Belegost, Nogrond and everything built by the dwarves. Many dwarves died during this event. The few survivors seeked refuge in another major dwarven kingdom during those times called Khazad Doom. A miles wide crack would break apart the Erefluin and create a bay area which later on is called the Gulf of Loon. The most eastern part of Osirian survived the destruction of Beleriand. A few surviving elves would still inhabit these remaining lands, led by the famous elf Gilgalad. This new realm of the elves would then be called Lindon. In the second age of the world, there is not really much happening in Erefluin. The dwarves basically abandoned this place and fled to other dwarven kingdoms. Gilgalad and his kingdom of Lindon would play some crucial roles in the war against Sauron and forming the Last Alliance. In the third age of the world and beyond, the Erefluin became yet again a refuge for dwarves. It became a new home for Thorin and his kin that survived the destruction of Erebor by the dragon Smaug. Thorin built a new kingdom in the Blue Mountains, which is the starting region for dwarven players in the Lord of the Rings Online. For the landscape section, let's have a look at the map in-game. We start here in the north in Thorin's Gate. 
Thorin's Gate is the tutorial region for dwarves and elves. In the open world it features its own map as you can see. This is the kingdom of Thorin Oakenshield that he founded after the destruction of Erebor. A notable place is the Silver Deep Mine, which is also required for the exploration deed. This place can also be explored. You can also find a abandoned elven city, which is called Ethelion. Thorin's Hall is another explorable region at Thorin's Gate. The entrance is found at the north of Thorin's Gate. In Thorin's Hall you can find all the important crafting stations, auction house, treasury, etc. In this frames you can see the forge. When heading south from Thorin's Gate we enter Thrain's Vale. This is a landscape located in the heart of the Erethloin. There is a dwarven outpost called Noglond, as well as a dwarven ruin which is inhabited by goblins called Orodost. Even though Erethluin is a starter region which normally goes up to level 15, there is also a place called Sarnur which starts at level 45 up to level 50. The entrance can be found on top of Orodost. This is a place where many high level players can finish deeds for their virtues. Sarnur has three places. The place you enter first is called the Great Hall. In the lower level of the Great Halls you can find a lot of trolls and signature worms. Sarnur also has a keep which can be entered at the northern side of the Great Hall. The enemies in the keep have a damage reduction to every weapon damage but ancient dwarven art. In the lower great hall you can also enter the caverns. In order to do effectively damage, here as well you will need ancient dwarven arts on your weapon. If we move more towards the east, we will find the Lowlands and Hard Lin. To mention is here the Dwarven stronghold called Gondamon. Here you can find things such as the bounty board or crafting stations. At the River Loon, you can find Keledul, which is another Dwarven fortress, but inhabited by evil dwarves. There's also a lodge called Tarzi's Lodge, which is important for the prologue story for dwarves and elves. The next region we are going to look at is Rough Terraik. This is a valley full of goblins that want to launch an attack against Gondamon. There is a bigger hill called the Amon Thunk, which is full of signature goblins. Everything in the southeast of Erefluin belongs to the elves and is called Falafthlorn. This is the starting region for elves and high elves. Falafthlorn has two elven villages that can be explored. One of them, located in the north, is called Duilund. The other elven village, which is located in the south of Falafthlorn, is called Kelondim. Kelandim is usually the gate to the Grey Havens, which is unfortunately not explorable yet in The Lord of the Rings Online.
In this video we are going to cover the Slayer Deeds as usual. The Edifluin is known to be a very easy place to get Slayer Deeds in, as well as Explorer Deeds. Most of the Slayer Deeds can be usually completed by simply do questing, but I will show you a few spots how you can speed that up. For the Brigand Slayer Deeds, it makes sense to do a few rounds in Kelidul and just kill the dwarves there. In Kelidul you will find plenty of dwarves to slay, as well as some Hendrivals, which is for another Slayer Deed. For the Hendrival Slayer, there is a Lynx Den north of Thari's Lodge. There is around 20 Hendrivals located around the Lynx Den that you can slay for the Hendrival Slayer Deed. You will usually finish the Goblin Slayer Deed by either questing as a Dwarf in Orodost or as an Elf in the Vineyard in Falaflorn. If you still need goblins for the advanced Slayer Deed, just go to Rough Teraik and slay the goblins there. For spiders, you can go to Talaf Ondren. For spiders there is also another interesting spot in Rough Terrak. Next to the southern barricade you can find a place with many spiders that seem to respawn indefinitely. This is a spot when you need like 20 to 30 spiders which can be farmed here very easily and quickly, but they have a long respawn time. For the last slayer deed, the wolf slayer deed, just go to Nenhilif. This is a little lake with a lot of fast respawning wolves around it. There's also a bunch of Slayer Deeds in Sarnur, but keep in mind this is for level 45 plus. In the upper level of the Great Hall, you can just run circles and kill Dower Hands and creatures for their Slayer Deed. In the lower level, you can kill trolls and snow creatures for the troll and creature slayer deed. One special thing to mention about the Edifluin is that it has two homestead regions. One of them is located in the elvish part. This is fine next to Duilond or to the border of the Shire. So if you are into elvish architecture and you want to have a house there, then this is the place to go. Same does also exist for the dwarves in Thorin's Gate. This housing area is located inside a cave where you can buy a house based on dwarven architecture. There is one reputation faction you can get in the air flowing, which is called Thorin's Hall. The borders are located in Thorin's Hall itself in the eastern part. There's a bunch of traders outside the hall as well as inside. In order to farm the Thorin's Hall reputation, just go to Sarnur and kill enemies there. They will drop the following reputation items. Let's have a look at a few interesting items. One of them is a recipe for a repair anvil that can be placed and allows everyone to use it and repair his armor. You can also unlock a skill that lets you port back to Torin's gate. There's also a long-sleeved dwarf make dress for the cosmetic items. 
as well as the reputation mount, which in that case is a goat. Well, that's basically it for this episode of A Guide to Lotro. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like or a subscription on this channel. There's also a playlist of those videos, so if you want to see a guide to Lotro about other regions, feel free to watch those. I also have a Twitch channel where I sometimes stream Lord of the Rings online. I see you in the next video of A Guide to Lotro, which will be about the Troll Shaws.